Who the newborns become, workers, soldiers, or reproductives, is determined by diet and chemical signals. Termite larvae are like identical factory blanks that can be turned into different products depending on how they're processed. Likewise, all termite larvae look the same at first, but their feeding regime decides who they will become. Food is the key control lever for population structure. Different types and amounts of food alter hormone levels in developing larvae, including the so-called juvenile hormone. High levels result in soldiers. Lower levels produce workers. In other words, it's a form of direct population management. In peaceful times, larvae receive a simpler diet, more fiber and humus, less protein and calories. This keeps their bodies small and universal without heavy armor or wings. These become workers. When danger arises and more defenders are needed, larvae are fed a soldier's diet, richer in protein. Hormone levels spike, development accelerates, mandibles grow, and defensive glands develop. There is no turning back. These larvae become soldiers. At the same time, the pheromones of the royal pair circulate throughout the colony. They suppress the development of extra princes and princesses until the nest is strong enough. To reach that strength, it first needs to mass produce enough workers and soldiers. When the colony finally matures enough for reproduction, the pheromone influence weakens, and some larvae receive royal nutrition, the richest, most high-calorie diet loaded with lipids. Their eyes, wings, and reproductive organs begin to form, a stage known as the nymph, which workers and soldiers skip entirely. From these nymphs emerge alates, future kings and queens.